Hi. Today we'll be taking a look at the steps required to hack the key restricted options on the MSO 1000Z series Rigel oscilloscope. Unlike the DSO and the 2000 series, the MSO 1000 series requires the unit to be opened and a memory dump to be performed using the JTAG header on the PCB. So let's start by creating a JTAG cable to connect to a JTAG USB interface. So I've just had a quick look on the internet and it looks like the oscilloscope has a 10-way header. Uh, this is a 0.1 inch 2-row header, standard type, um, and the Olimex and also the J-Link, if you want to do this J-Link, has a 20-way header. Uh, that's also a 0.1 inch uh, dual-row header. And the signal's just passed straight through, so for the cable that's going to uh, connect the uh, JTAG adapter up to the oscilloscope, uh, we just connect ground to ground. 3 volts to 3 volts, and then also the uh, various signals straight through to the other connector. To make this cable, I'm just going to use some standard 702 hookup cable, and then I've got some Harwin M20 series connectors. Uh, these are just the housings, and then you can buy the crimp separately, and uh, we'll just make a nice little cable, which I'll do now. So here we have the completed JTAG cable. Uh, you'll see on the sped up video that I ended up soldering and heat shrinking these two wires together. The reason being that, um, so VREF and VTARGET on the JTAG programmer need to be connected to the three volt supply on the target. And rather than trying to bodge two wires into the same crimp, it was easier just to, um, just to solder them and heat shrink them. It makes it a bit neater. So next I'll try and take the cover off the oscilloscope and we'll see if we can connect to it and uh, do a memory dump. So next we'll just take the cover off. These are Torx 10 bits. We're in. Cool. There we go. Oh. 
we've just got uh, the nut on the BMC here to do. Not terribly easy to get to the header with the power supply still connected. So I'll show you a close-up, but uh, just overall from the top of the board, this is the JTAG header that we need to be connected to. So just in the centre of the PCB we have the processor here, and then this is the JTAG header that we need to be connecting to. Um, in this corner we have the 3 volt uh, ground, the no connect here, and TCK is top left. So we'll be connecting this with the red wire um, to the top right. Here's the scope back with the power connector plugged in and the fan connector plugged in here. I've also placed a fan just blowing across the PCB because the airflow is going to be interrupted uh, through the oscilloscope now that it's away from the board. And now I just plug in the JTAG cable into the uh, JTAG USB interface and uh, we'll power up the oscilloscope and we should be able to do the memory dump now. I've just opened Windows command line and browsed to the folder that I downloaded OpenOCD to and now I'm just going to copy in a command which is linked underneath the video and this will connect to the OnMX USB JTAG adapter and now in Telnet, um, so I'll browse to uh, Putty and start a Telnet session on the host at port 4444 and if we open that uh, we are connected to the on-chip debugger. Once we're connected to the on-chip debugger we can then stop the CPU on the scope by typing the command HALT. Now that the CPU is halted we can perform the memory dump um, so we want to use the command dump underscore image and then for the file name, uh, we can just call that MSO1074Z. And we're copying uh, from 4000000 to 3FFF, FFFF. And we'll just begin that, and that'll probably take about seven or eight minutes. Whilst the memory dump's taking place, I did purchase a slightly more quiet 5cm fan to replace the one that's in the oscilloscope. So I'm just going to put a connector on this and uh, prepare to install that into the power supply once we're done with the memory dump. The memory dump's now just completed. That took approximately 8 minutes. It says here 469, which is um, yeah between 7 and 8 minutes. It's worth just checking in the folder that uh, OpenOCD is installed in that we have the binary file, we can see it's there and probably worth just opening it up and seeing it contains some characters to make sure that it actually uh, did a transfer but that looks all okay. So I'm just going to uh, put the new fan in the oscilloscope, put the cover back on and then we can generate the license keys. For any of you also installing a new fan, you just want to make sure that the airflow is blowing through the casework in this direction. So generally that's with the label facing uh, towards the outside of the case. And I've just crimped a 0.1 inch, uh, another Harwin M20 series connector on the end of this. It's probably worth just adding a little bit of hot glue onto this because it doesn't clip into the uh, connector like the original fan did. So the original fan had one of these connectors which I don't happen to have any in at the moment so I'll just use this one, it's fine. 
So now that the oscilloscope's back together and we have the memory dump, I've copied that into a folder with the rig up tool and booted up Linux and now we're going to make the source code. So we'll make clean first uh, because it looks like it was built for a Mac previously and then make all and it will build the files. Now that the source code is built, we can use the rig up tool to scan the binary file for the required keys. So we just type in that command and it should do that. And now if we have a look in the directory, we can see mso1074z.txt, which will have the keys, hopefully. So we can see there we have all the required keys to use the rig up tool to create license keys. And then to actually create the license keys, we just uh, run rig up. And then we just choose the options that we want to install. So the first one, 1C001, is the triggering. So if we do that, we should get a license key and we can put that into the scope, so let's have a go. Okay, so we have the scope, we can see the installed options, they're all trials at the moment. So I think we click setup, editor, and then try and type this code in. So let's see if that works. Option installed successfully. And it looks like all the trigger menus unlocked. So you can repeat that procedure for all of the unlocks that you want to perform. I'm going to um, use just the trigger, decoder, memory depth, recorder and unlock the bandwidth option as well. Uh, so I'll report back when I've typed all those codes in. I don't know if that's possible to do over LAN or USB, um, I'll have to have a look. And there we go, that's all the options installed. Um, it looks like you can insert the keys using skippy commands but it actually wasn't too bad to end up typing them all in. Um, it's a little bit tedious but not too bad. And additionally that fan is considerably quieter in the Vigor unit now. Um, it's still blowing out a reasonable amount of air. It is slightly less than what the original fan was doing but I never noticed it being uh, even vaguely warm so I think that'll be fine. I'll put links to where all the tools I used underneath the video along with the commands that I used. So thanks for watching.